Hi guys, welcome to another video. Before we continue, I just wanted to take a moment and say big thank you for everyone who's recently subscribed to the channel, um, also the ones who put likes under the videos. Um, there is nothing more rewarding than seeing that you guys like the content I create and it just gives me more fuel to do some more videos. So um, please continue to do that. Um, I will be producing more content um, on a regular basis. And yeah, let's just get on with the show. And now, everyone, please welcome the Radeon HD5970. Just like its predecessor that we looked at a few weeks back, this GPU combines two Hemlock XT graphics processor on a single board to maximize the performance. Equipped with 2GB of GDDR5 memory, the support for DirectX 11.2 and AMD iThinity, this card launched in November of 2009 for staggering 699 USD. Oh also, did I mention I have two of these? Let's take a closer look. This better be good. Both of my cards are XFX branded and off the reference design and they do require one 6 and one 8 pin connector from your power supply. There's two DVIs and one mini display link present for the display output. Removing the backplate first, we see thermal pads are present to help with memory temps, unlike on the 5870 that we've looked at last week. Removing GPU brackets was next. And the GPU should come apart soon. And there it is. I paid 85 pounds or 115 US dollars for the pair of them. To think that this combo would have cost someone over 1000 US dollars, I mean hello 2021 and the silicon shortages, hey? Following the reference design, the cooler is pretty much the same as to what we saw last week. Moving along, we clean the old thermal paste with some isopropyl alcohol and use of cotton pads. Both of my 5970s were previously fitted with water blocks, hence why I'm not going to take them apart since there was no prior use of them. I have a confession to make, calling for MX5 thermal paste in all of my previous videos. Um, in fact, I'm using MX4 all the way along. I'm not entirely sure how I ended up calling it MX5, but hey, there you go. Finishing the job by applying some MX4 thermal paste, let's put the cart together and move on to some testing. Before we start in Heaven Benchmark, I have a quick ask of you guys. Would you be as kind and run this with these settings and post your scores below? I'm just curious to see what your machines are capable of. Here, the 5970 managed to score 1096 points. When running the pair, we almost doubled that at 1,898 points. Again, rank topping and really amazing results for both runs. Looking at the previous scores, it's almost funny to think that just a few weeks back I was blown away how well the 4870 performed in comparison to even then the last year's 3870. This is great progress, just some two years later. The power efficiency is also scaling nicely with the 5970, where the peak power consumption of the test rig was just 276 watts and some 507 when using pair of them. This brings me to another point about these old extreme cards. The scaling we achieved in the synthetic benchmark sadly does not translate well into the actual games that these cards are intended for. 
I was struggling with the quad fire setup and spent considerable time trying to figure out what the heck was happening. I understand that the game engines were simply not optimized for such levels of grand performance and only managed to get a handful of games that could handle all four GPU cores. Oh well, let's jump into the game testing. All right. Let's go, Vito. Hey, in Mafia 2, we, we see go. great overall hey, utilization, resulting in almost 88 FPS on average, more than satisfying the maxed out at 60 FPS I usually aim hey, so, for. Vito, what was the one thing you missed the most when you was in a game? Freedom. Yeah, well, but besides that, now you know, uh, booze. Far Cry 3 was next, where the 5970 delivered respectable 60 FPS on average, Great GPU utilization again. No significant frame drops report here, just smooth gameplay. Fallout 4 was next on the list, where 36 FPS on average does not sound bad, however, the input lag was beyond horrendous. Also, for this game, I had to use the newer Crimson drivers, otherwise, I would get what I would only describe as a flickering mess. In Dirt Rally, we averaged 33 frames per second. Something wasn't quite right here, the GPU utilization was not great and I've noticed some serious stutter, but I suspect it must be the VRAM limitation. Metro 2033 Redux was the first game where I could get the port fire to work and the GPU usage was in mid 80s. Despite this, we only saw 34 FPS on average. A single 5970 achieved nearly 18 FPS on average. This game is extremely demanding, or could it be that it is Nvidia optimized title? Well, we shall find out at some point. A major disappointment came with GTA's 4 performance, where the poor GPU utilization meant we only achieved 43 FPS on average, which is some 15 FPS less than the 5870 managed in last week's video. GTA 5, on the other hand, ran really well, and we achieved 105 FPS on average. Doing some off-roading in Test Drive Unlimited 2, here, the 5970 pulled amazing results, well over 90 FPS on average. Destination is three kilometers away. Need for Speed Most Wanted was next. Here, the 5970 manages nearly 29 FPS on average. However, the game is pretty much unplayable due to massive frame time delays and also the VRAM limitations. Until the next time then. In Dying Light, 5970 scaled well and we've managed 50 FPS on average, offering really solid good gameplay. Alien isolation showed no mercy, and we saw really poor GPU utilization, resulting in just 45 FPS on average, which is 10 less than what 5870 delivered last week. Not ideal, I know. And here we have a new addition to our testing. Please welcome Witcher 3. The 5970 barely managed 21 FPS on average. I know, the not ideal GPU utilization and lack of VRAM is dangerous combo which led to this poor result. Dying Light 
The second and last title that took the advantage of Quartfire was Stalker Call of Pripyat. The utilization hovered in high 80s to mid 90s and we saw 152 FPS on average. The single 5970 managed 94 FPS on average, which is still an amazing result. Last game we've tested today was 2013's Tomb Raider. Here, we saw amazing results of 137 frames per second on average, which meant this game is no trouble for the 5970. So, what do you guys think of the 5970? Please let me know in the comments below. I must admit, I'm if little disappointed by the results. After the amazing show that the 5870 delivered last week, one would have hoped for a bit more. This is mostly supported by the non-existing support for Quadfire, which might not be that surprising. After all, who in their right mind would run off and spend $1400 on graphics cards? Well, remember, this was 2009. But that's it for today's video. Please give it a like if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.